It's Hannah and Johnny from 93.9 Virgin Radio. We're so excited to be joined by Katherine McKinnon this morning. Um, she is the star of a short film that's going to be premiering at the Windsor Film Festival this Saturday. So Katherine, are you excited for the premiere of your movie this weekend? Am I ever, yes. This is the first, first film festival that I've been admitted to and Windsor Film Festival. It's great to be back again. It's a true honor. So when you found out that your film was going to be included in the festival, how did you feel? Did you celebrate? Oh, yes, I did. I was jumping. I was <laughs> jumping for joy. I couldn't stop. That's and awesome. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Where are you from in Canada and what got you into acting? Is it something that you've wanted to do for your whole life? Sure. So great, great uh, start. My name is Catherine McKinnon mm -hmm. and this is my sign name like this. And I grew up in Eastern Canada um, in PEI in Nova Scotia area. So I'm a, a, a Nova Scotian or a PEI in, and I moved to Ontario a um, long time ago, over actually uh, around 25 years ago. And so I did live in California for five years and then came back to Ontario. But anyways, um, how did I get into acting? Yes, all my life. So I remember the first time I had uh, the experience of seeing an actor on stage. I was five years old and there was a deaf actor using sign language and I was just taken in by it. And I didn't know ASL at the time. I was deaf, but I didn't use sign language. I was an oral using deaf. And uh, so I saw that actor. I also was very intrigued with acting on TV and any venue. So I, got, I was very interested from a young age. Um, in, I did go to film school, graduated with my BAF, uh, Fine Arts. And now I was at the university, which is now called the Toronto Metropolitan University. That's where I attended and got my degree. It used to be Ryerson. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, um, so that's, that's me in a nutshell. And, um, you know, acting, uh, especially when it comes to facial expression and body acting, physical acting, storytelling as well. Um, you know, it doesn't have to just, it, you know, acting doesn't have to include speech. It, you know, I was very intrigued by any acting that included all of those in sign language as well. Yeah, I saw Hannah get very excited when you said you're an East Coaster because she's also from the East Coast. I didn't know, Catherine. Oh, really? I didn't Scotia. know. <laughs> yes. Um, I'm from Halifax. So um, I lived in Halifax oh. my whole life until I was 24. I went to Dalhousie University. Um, and I just went to, yeah, you know. <laughs> I know Dal, yeah. I was there for a year too before. Oh, and yeah, I was there uh, years ago. Yeah, for sure. Oh, amazing. that's amazing. That's very cool that you got your start and now you're at the film festival. Yeah. So speaking of the movie, Cat's Got Your Tongue, can you explain it to us for anyone who might not be familiar with it? Sure, no problem. Um, so the film is a short story uh, and it's about um, going to purchase a vehicle and ex experiencing a lot of obstacles. And the obstacles that were got in the way of, of the, uh, the actor, the, the character are about people's biases. And in this case about, you know, a person being deaf and trying to purchase a car and discovering her superpower, <laughs> her secret superpower. Um, and so the reason that I wrote the film as it was based on my own personal experience, actually, um, trying to deal with a financial institute and experience a lot of obstacles mm -hmm. and not getting a lot of support. Mm -hmm. And so, and then I met Aniko mm -hmm. and she is acting in the film as well. Unfortunately, she wasn't able to join us for the interview today, but she and I brainstormed and came up with a beautiful story. And she, actually, when I told her my story of my experiences with the obstacles, she said, no, we have to do something about this. We have to write this story. And so that's how the script came together. And then we changed it from my real story into purchasing a car, mm -hmm. um, you know, in the story. Yeah. So... That's unbelievable. We do want to give a shout out to your fellow crew members, of course. 
Aniko Kazas that you just mentioned, um, director Elizabeth Whitmere and other actors involved in the project, Adam Morose, Carlisle J. Williams and Gugan Deep Singh. Um, so how did you all get together to start this project? What inspired you to come together onto this? Well, I'm a member of ACTRA, which is the Actors Association. And there was a co-op program called well, it's a co-op program. And I met um, Kuzan years ago, actually, in a different venue. They didn't know how to sign. Mm -hmm. It was maybe four or five years ago. But when we met again, they were using sign language. I'm like, oh, I'm so impressed that in that period of time, they learned sign language. So they came on board. That was just an automatic fit. And then um, they were friends with Liz and the, the director. And Liz also um, knew a little bit of sign language too. So that was just, just so beautiful to incorporate that in, in our whole um, process. And, you know, it didn't matter about what level of sign language skill they had, but people were all willing to communicate visually. And so we brought these people on board. And um, so it was a, just a natural team, uh, beautiful team. Nice. Awesome. Uh, so yeah, we were going to ask about, did I answer your question? Tom? Oh, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. It was just, I think the thing was you answered another question we had. So <laughs> I think after that, um, we were wondering, you know, what kind Sorry of, about that. no problem. No, it's good. All questions That's, at once. It's, it's a, a great thing. thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, we were wondering too, you know, if there was any, uh, challenges you ran along there, ran into along the way of filming this a whole thing through the whole experience, you know, keeping the set inclusive. Was there any obstacles or specific challenges that you really had to work creatively to figure out? Um, yeah, great question. The film is very short. So, you know, it was only one day of shooting. So we had two locations, but all on the same day. And so it was Toronto and Burlington. So that <laughs> You know, traffic, we tried to, you know, traffic was a challenge, you know, yes. trying to work our shooting around that terrible Toronto traffic yeah. and get there on time. Mm -hmm. um, so that was one challenge. And then, um, well, I guess a challenge for us is just teaching everybody how to say cut and how to, you know, di make directions and how to get the actors so that you have them in the bright background with the other actors because I'm not able to hear. So, and be, you know, move moving and acting and directing in small spaces. The director sometimes was sitting on the floor and giving me a visual cue to cut um, so that I could see them and not and that they wouldn't be in the scene. So that was, that was challenging, but we worked it out. Um, and, and sometimes it was as subtle as a head movement. So that was one example of a challenge that we had to get creative with. Wow. We did. And, That's we, super and, and those things have to happen like at the spur of the moment very quickly. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh. Doing something like that. I can imagine a lot of things are done and decisions are made on the fly, especially when you have such little time. <laughs> so mm -hmm. the description mm -hmm. says, Kat, that you overcome your obstacles using your secret superpower, like you mentioned, and we don't want to ruin what that superpower is. But outside of the film, do you have any other secret superpowers in your life that you're really good at doing something that you want to tell us about? Hmm. Well, I guess I do have a secret power, secret superpower. And I think in my case, it's conversation, uh, being able to, you know, work through um, any communication barriers and talk about things if there's, you know, if there's an issue, just talk it through rather than make assumptions and work through people's biases, my own biases. So, um, and I don't bite. I tell people, you know, let's just talk it through. So, and I also use humor in my life just to get through many things. So, you know, sometimes there is things that happen in the world that are stressful and, um, you know, it's, uh, you know, humor, humor is such a great way to, so I guess I would say that's one of my superpowers. And there is a lot of comedy and, and humor in the, in the short film as well. I think that's an incredibly valuable superpower to have these days. So I can appreciate that. Um, for people who are yeah. going to see the film, what do you want people to take away from this? What, what is the, the specific message or just one thing that you hope that they gain from watching this? I guess, first of all, um, it, the film is fully accessible 
it's you it, you can see it in sign language as well as captioning as well as an open captioning not closed captioning um so it's fully accessible and i'm hoping as well that people get inspired i, I now i don't mean inspirational porn not <laughs> in the least i'm not going there at all with this film so mm-hmm. but inspiration is in terms of hey you know this story and this story is my story it's a story and they, they want to encourage people to tell their story so yeah, it's a short film, but I, it's impactful as well. So I'm hoping that, you know, that they can see things from different perspectives. And I'm hoping that it'll cause people to think, give them pause and, you know, and think about how do we overcome obstacles? What creative ways can we do that? Inspiration. So, and then, you know, depending, I think, who the audience is. But yeah, yeah. totally. I was just going to say inspiration everyday inspiration is so much more meaningful i find than the inspiration glamorized inspiration porn like you mentioned i think that's really awesome and that's exactly it that's Mm -hmm. exactly it and things are changing now and i'm happy to see that things are changing and i realized that things weren't the way they should be and so there needed to be a shift and so you know approaching things from the right perspective and really showing you know things the way they are yeah. That's awesome. Well, we're so happy, happy to have you in Windsor in the lineup at the film festival. Um, have you ever been to Windsor before? Yeah, right. Yeah, I'm excited to be there too. And uh, well, um, there was a feature film called The Hammer, which I, I came for. That was in 2011. It was an American film, um, but it was Canadian actors involved in the team. Um, the producer, sorry, was a Canadian. And so I saw that one in 2011 and it really just it was great because it was an honor I think as well because um that the it was they had a good that showed a good relationship with the Windsor Festival and when they asked me if I had a film uh you know in following years I had to say no I don't and then they asked me again and I said no I I don't don't have a film but this time I finally had a film that I could finally can say yes (laughs) (laughs) yeah so I finally could say yes exactly so, you know, and so that just shows, you know, that Windsor had a lot of patience with me and I'm, I'm glad to have met Aniko. She is just amazing. If, you know, and when I first met her, she knew zero sign language, you know, and to get her to the place where she is now, I taught her sign language and we also became friends and now we're colleagues. And so, you know, she's signing so amazingly now. It's just an amazing relationship. Yeah. So. That's amazing. Aniko is super nice. I remember just having so much joy meeting you guys. So we were so happy that we could get to talk to you about your film today. Yes, yes. You know, I'm just thrilled um, to be here, uh, to be coming to Windsor, um, getting packed up now and getting ready to leave tomorrow and head right (laughs) down your way. (laughs) Well, we don't want to keep you too long. Is there anything else you wanted us to know about the film Cat's Got Your Tongue? Any thoughts that we haven't covered already? Um, I think we, I mean, the goal is hopefully that the film um, will inspire more short films of its genre, you know. So, yeah, I mean, you know, the story's not over. And there will be more stories and more, you know, content and more environment and, you know, with deaf and hearing actors working together in a variety of genres. So, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that this just is the start of more. So I guess that's it. Um, it's about telling our stories. That's amazing. Thank you, Catherine, so much. We are just over the moon. And thank you, Rosalie, too, as well, for interpreting this interview. I appreciate both of you, and so does Johnny so much. Yes, thank you. Um, Thank you, Rosalie, as well. Pat's short film is premiering on Saturday night at 8.30 p.m. during the WIF Local Shorts Number 3 screening at the Capitol Theatre at the Windsor Film Festival. So we can't wait to go and check it out. Yeah. Me too. And the sign for thank you is like this. Thank you. you. Yes. Thank you. And I would sign you're welcome like this. You're welcome. Nice. Thank you for that. Oh, thank you. (laughs) Yeah, you're welcome.